Hey everybody, Jay Marino here. Welcome back. Continuing UED AIP remakes of the Brood War campaigns. It's part of a mod for StarCraft Remastered created by Necron. So, heading into the Insurgent this time, and I've talked about the synopses that I found on the UED AIP Discord, and I figure I can share these with you. And I guess they could be sort of construed as spoilers, but for me, they really just pique my curiosity. So, I just kind of give you a, an idea of what I'm thinking when I go into each mission. Large-scale PvP that forces the player to scout. Use mind control effectively and find opportunities to destroy enemy production. Possible to end the map without destroying any enemy base. Alderis retaliates if you attack Kali settlements. Pacifist ending gives a Kali AI ally in Protoss 8. So there's a pacifist ending, meaning don't attack anything. Alright, so let's get started and, and see what we're in for. Be advised, Executor. Our forces are divided. Alderis has taken control of our Templar warriors and arbiters. It is possible that he may even send Archons against us. Fear not, comrades, for we have Archons of our own. Should the dire need arise, all Dark Templar may merge to become Dark Archons. Though we sacrifice our warriors in doing so, only the might of the Dark Archons can match the forces of Aldaris. Alright, so we've got the Dark Archons. They look the same. We can only make revenants. No Dragoons this time, but Zealots appear typical. So I'm just going to grab one more Dark Archon. And we're just gonna mind control the crap out of stuff, and let's start getting some upgrades and keep getting saturated. Not enough minerals. And we can go ahead and send a probe over to the left because we can consider taking these outlying bases pretty quick. Oh, hello. Oh, they're are they gonna they're gonna contest us? I think. Oh, interesting. So we've got these little uh, maybe these are like proto Zel Naga watchtowers. So we have vision of things coming into our base, which is very very nice. Let's just go and check and see what they're doing. I don't, again, if they're setting stuff up, maybe we want to restart and try to take that stuff faster than they can get to it. Okay, no need to, again, I guess I can't compete with them for that. Again, I don't want to kill anything that's not actively attacking me. Okay, we have scouts coming in, like, scouts are expensive, we should probably go ahead and take those. And, uh... Get some more coverage here. Oh, I'm sorry, Probe. Well, oh well. Okay, DTs, and where are these units going to come and attack us from? Honestly, I think maybe we just get another Dark Archon as well. And I would love to grab Argus Talisman. Expensive. If I'm stuck on one base, it's going to be a struggle. Okay, come on down here. I feel like scout, like having a group of air units that can focus down carriers is going to be worthwhile for sure. Get in there. What are you doing, boys? Okay, so we are cloaked. is not attacking us with his full might executor. It might be wise not to provoke him. And there it is. The, there it is, the little, uh, hey, maybe you shouldn't, shouldn't attack him. But, again, the question is... What counts what counts as pacifist? Do we still have to kill Aldaris, but avoid but avoid somehow getting to Ooh, that was close. Alright, let's move you back. Uh, we have to somehow avoid antagonizing the bases around him. So there's a there's a, a teal color, or is that cyan? I, I get them confused. Teal's a little darker, I think. Um there's a there is a teal color, teal player, and uh I guess that's who we're we're gonna try to avoid to kill. I I don't know. Can get him DTs, just normal DTs. It looks like they're coming in with observers pretty consistently as well. Uh, and I also don't know how long we have to sit in our base and not kill anything. Uh, again, or maybe I, if it hits a point like I'll I'll keep cycling saves where I might have to actually try to go and kill. Aldaris in some fashion. I don't know. Okay, let's get more shield batteries. Just get pylon coverage everywhere. Because we need these for our Dark Archons. And in fact, I think more Dark Archons 
if every wave comes with something that we want to take, we want to make sure we have enough Dark Archons to do exactly that. So, I, again, Revenant's real cool. And they have that melee attack, which prote protects them pretty decently from Zealots, but they're, they're also going to get completely roasted by Reavers. Because these are very fragile. They only have 100 HP total, so I think they would just get one shot by Reavers once the Reavers get the upgrade. And I'd like to make sure that these guys stay topped up. Keep them spread out, relatively spread out, and we'll just get a, a slew of cannons. The vision that we have of things coming in towards our base is extremely useful. Uh, I got my Stargate, but I don't think I actually want to be utilizing it in any way. Let's go ahead and grab a... Uh, well, again, I, I think scouts, but like carriers, we could just mind control carriers that move in towards us. So I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Being being stuck on one base is pretty rough. What I probably want to do is like move some units to sit up on the high ground here. Let's get some additional zealots so that we can spread them out. But again, they're, they're going to get killed by reavers. So it's all about just sort of how sneaky the enemy is going to end up being in trying to get to us. And how reactive we can be with mind control. I could also take a look at this and, and see if we can get up there. All right, so here comes Brown. I could take I could take scouts, or I can simply kill them. Okay, here comes a carrier. I obviously would like that instead. Okay, revenants move over there, and then I'll just go and steal this. I need to get my Dark Archons into a place where I can see it so that I can take it. Uh, Scout, just give me some vision. Alright, there we go. So now it's ours. Oh, and it got us it gave us the free interceptor capacity. I built a second Templar archive. Uh, okay, kill this. Not you, buddy. Okay, so yeah, they're 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 hitting us pretty hard with some of this stuff. Just trying to get rid of this uh this extra Templar archive. Yeah, so I can see that they've expanded there. Let's get a robo facility. And maybe we can build those uh those Harriers. And I presume over time we will be hitting a, a fairly sizable mineral. Uh, mineral, um... Oh, gosh. <laughs> Did that do damage to it? I don't think so. Uh, mineral bank. Whereas Vespine is going to be something that we're going to be banking, I think, over time. So I'm just trying to spread these out. It seems like air units going to be coming from the sides. Definitely want to get a robo-facility. Because I, I want to get some observers so that we can get some additional vision where necessary. So let's throw this down here. I think that's enough probes. I'm going to be supply blocked, so we got to get some more. Pylons, and this will benefit from our upgrade, so let's take it. it. Seems like every attack does come with observers, as it really should. Okay. Looking good. I'm feeling pretty safe. Again, the question is, should I be trying to make a, a force of, like, scouts to go and snipe Aldal Alderis? Should I be making a force of, uh, Dark Archons and Shuttles? I can't hallucinate unless I were to steal High Templar. It's interesting how these two are the are the hallucinations, but and they're different factions. It's almost, like, very clear, hey, it's the real one! <laughs> Alright, good, so... That was our Dark Archon energy. And I, I really just... There's nothing worse than needing to mind control something and then not having energy to do it. So I'm just going to make sure that I keep... making plenty of... I thought that might be a carrier. Just keep making plenty of Dark Archons and then spread them out. And then I think probably revenants, extra revenants, and then upgrades. Let's focus on upgrades, getting some additional cannons. Archons and reavers coming in. Obviously, that's the kind of stuff we want to take. Mm, probably really the carrier. Grab the carrier. 
Not enough energy, as I had said. One of the worst things you can have happen is needing energy on your on your Dark Archons, and then they get roasted. I'm trying to get up there to take the Reaver, but instead, let's just kill it. Interceptors, interceptors. If they don't have detection, actually, our revenants can actually deal most of the di the necessary damage to kill these. Okay, plus three weapons. And the reavers that I'm taking, I guess, would really benefit from damage upgrades. So let's do that, and then get an observatory. I can't make hornets, unfortunately. Okay, as I mentioned, I, I was expecting a, a mineral bank. Uh, let's see if we can kill this. I mean, I could take him, but let's see if we can kill him before he moves in and storms. Okay, got him. Why don't we just go and take and kill this thing? Before it gets close. This is this is definitely it's intense. I need zealot legs. There we go. And as long as I I mean as long as I keep taking carriers as they come in close, then we we should be fine. And then just get our energy back, throw down some additional cannons, get some more revenants. Just trying to stay on top of of these types of attacks. Spread the cannons out so that we're not losing too much to Reavers. Okay. And I never built that observatory. Let's do that now. I guess I could throw another... I mean, it's oversaturating it, sort of. But the way that they're pathing is not really working. Not really working for me, so let's go to move. Uh, Fleet Beacon to get upgrades here. I, yeah, the gas, yeah. It's pretty tough. I do have Zealot Legs on the way. Let's get some cannons up here and keep the Revenants spread out, because, again, they die so easily to Reavers. So I'm very hesitant to make too many of them. Same with cannons, though. Uh, they, it's like they're very expensive for what you get. They're not very good frontline supporting type things. Spread these bad boys out. Looking good on energy for the most part. Looks like everybody can mind control for now. What do we have coming in? Just some scouts. So let's just uh, move the carriers up a little bit. I, I would like that fleet beacon. If only so that I can get those upgrades. Where's I built a robo support bay. There it is. Uh, scarab damage does seem worthwhile. And this stuff does inherit my upgrades, so I appreciate that. They're mostly hitting from the right side, but I keep I, I keep leaving units on the on the left, and it's not it's not doing me any favors. Okay. Took a, a good bit of damage there. Okay, so I'm gonna grab Scarab and Hornet. Dan no, no, I'm not. My, the Reaver that I had is dead. So yeah, no, leave leave that. Uh, Maelstrom probably going to be pretty good here, or just, you know, take the carrier, etc, etc. Let's move everybody over. Cancel this. Make sure that we're taking... using I for mind control. That's not the right hotkey. Again, as long as I take their high-tiered units, it's fine. You guys back up. Very nice. And then I've got my own little fleet of carriers. So this pacifist ending is supposed to be kind of... It's just supposed to be a secret, almost like Easter egg. The, uh, the thing is, like, you know your boy is gonna do his best to try to find all these, these neat little things throughout these maps. So that's what we're doing. And I should be taking this time to be separating my Dark Archons into groups that I can properly... Oh my gosh, I've been supply blocked forever. Into groups that I can properly uh, mind control with and ones that are lacking energy. Let's try to kill that. So the ones that, are, that don't have enough, you will have enough 
soon. You will have enough soon. You have enough. You have enough. Most, I mean, most of them do have enough. Let's just go ahead and get pylons. It's because we're mind controlling a lot of stuff. Uh, we just have to make sure, like, mind control is all well and good, but I, I have to make sure that I am consistently... I have to make sure that I am consistently getting enough to kill, like, large masses of zealots, for example. Let's just go ahead and move out our carriers and, and deal with this before they get too close. It's possible they'll stop before they even bother attacking me. Okay, very nice. And we'll, you know, we'll slow, we'll be getting more carriers as well. I like those, I like the, the High Templar harassment. It's good that we're taking those out before they become a major threat. Let's come on over here, get more pylons and then more cannon coverage. Again, spread the cannons out. I guess just upgraded zealots also really give us what we need to defend against these larger attacks. And the occasional revenant, if we if we can if we can see if we can get eyes on the observers and kill them, then our revenants are safe to wipe out whatever's on the ground as well and air for that matter. So so, Cyan does take these both of our expansions. So you're, if you want to do this. If you want to do this, uh, quote, pacifist run, then you need... Then you need to, uh, basically forego any expansions. Though it's possible you could beat them to the expansions. I don't know. This is just goofy stuff. Go in and start chipping away. The fact that we have vision is just so nice. Right, back at him up. Take their carrier. Do I think the stuff you mind control inherits your upgrades, not the other way around. Like Warcraft 3, if you were if you were to steal a mastery level shaman, for example, and you didn't have mastery training, you now permanently have mastery training. That's how that works, which is obviously extremely strong. Right, I got a lot of stuff coming in here. I'm just gonna rely on my Carriers just sort of, sort of, you know, be in the back and take do most of the DPS that we need. We must stand resolute. Okay, and he every so often decides to taunt us. I'm gonna just set up the cannons that we lost and just keep making Dark Templar for more Dark Archons. Oh, you son of a bitch! Well, that's the that's the. That's the High Templar harassment that I had mentioned. Again, just to spread these out. Reavers are the biggest threat, and the fact that we can see them on their way to us makes this, if you're playing it as a defensive map, makes it a lot easier. It's interesting, too, how it says that Aldaris is not sending his full strength against us, but it certainly seems like they're full strength to me. You know, trying to play this by moving out and, and actually killing Aldaris seems like it would be really tough. But also to reiterate, I don't know how long this is going to go, right? This It's getting... The attacks are getting pretty large. Okay, the Harriers don't concern me too much. I mean, like, I could, I could use Maelstrom, but I don't really want to. Uh, I'll steal this. Now we have a Reaver, what's coming in? Multiple carriers, you don't have enough. You guys do not have enough. Okay. Well, I got one. The other one can leave if it wants because it ran out of interceptors. Again, our fleet of, of mind-controlled carriers is, I mean, that's, that's the typical way to play this map. It's very hard to make the map harder to accommodate for the fact that a player can do that. Uh, yes, air weapons level 3 should really finish this up for us. Finishing up plasma shields also would be nice. Let's get these Archons into a position where they can actually do something, as opposed to getting path blocked and not being able to support us when we're getting attacked by large groups of zealots and dragoons. We're going to get mined out here, I think, at this rate. Okay. Energy, you're full. Again, just keep these guys spread out. You're full. You're you were just used, so let's So 
a variety of ways that you can utilize dark, um, use uh, shield batteries. You can right click. You can right click with the shield battery straight on. You can click recharge shields on the unit itself. You can click on the unit and right click the shield battery. You can hit R on the ground, and any nearby units will get uh, get nice and shielded. Oh, look at these jerks. All right, let's transition over here. I'm just gonna take. Where did the Reaver go? Ah, you're trapped, you dummy! Okay, my upgrades, though, are not really keeping up with them. It's like they had a Reaver. I thought I saw them drop a Reaver, and then they decided, ah, nah. <laughs> I changed my mind. It's fine with me. We're looking good on energy, though, on all fronts, so that we can take more stuff. Let's go ahead and move our carriers up here to deal with this stuff that's going to be... This is why I put an observer up here, because I was kind of concerned that they would be trying to... to drop up here. In fact, a lot of their stuff is path blocked, so it all kind of works out. Was that... I saw something float, floating in. You know the drill. I, I hesitate to say this, but I think maybe these things... That, the... the the watchtowers that give you vision might be a little too strong. Though, again, I am playing this in a particular manner. Oh, kill him before he storms me, please. There we go. One solid round of... of interceptor fire. Apparently, the interceptors were made faster to deal with the fact that... Um... In, or in, like, vanilla carriers, you can do some sort of special micro with them to allow them to attack more, fa like, uh, just quicker. Like, the, there's a, there's like a, it's essentially like a cooldown time as the interceptors attack and they make a wide swoop around. Uh, so if you just auto attack with them, um, these carriers are stronger. Simply because they, the interceptors move faster, so they swoop for less time, uh, because they're just, they simply move faster. Um... But it also makes it a lot harder to manage um, doing that micro that allows you to, like, supercharge them by having them attack super quick because it makes the timing, like, the window for the timing a lot, uh, a lot dicier. So, again, they were, they were made, like, they were made stronger from, like, a vanilla perspective. But from a, like a, no, I don't, I don't know, I don't want to say, like, an expert level, but, like, a, maybe, like, a cheese level of perspective, uh, they were actually made, uh, weaker. But I never, I don't know how to do that. I never had utilized that type of, like, interceptor manipulation to make them attack more frequently. Yeah! Get him, Revenant. Right, back up, you're fine. Back up. Let's go and kill this thing before it gets too close. And we just, again, it's interesting how that faction comes out and takes these, it, it basically to say, you know, if, you, if you're not going to get the passive ascending, you're, you're simply not going to get it because of uh, the way this functions. And again, I still am not clear on how long this is going to last. I'm going to get some additional revenants. Also, maybe I should consider moving out here soon to kill Alderis. I mean, it's called pacifist, which to me means don't even, don't even kill Alderis. But I don't know what's what would trigger the end besides, you know, just simply waiting. And that might be it. It might be as as basic as you know, just wait, and we can just get a big old army. And the biggest problem is we're gonna run out of money. We're gonna run out of income. So that's why I'm I'm steadily stockpiling. And uh, it might be worth getting uh, even more DTs for even more Dark Archons, because... Replenishing our army is going to be entirely dependent on mind control. Right. An Arbiter. Actually, taking that would be great. There we go. Pretty large attacks coming in. Possibly for like the, the, the final... The final run here. But again, I do have a very, very strong air force now. 
No, no, no. Keep him cloaked. <laughs> Again, if you if you do if you notice where they don't have observers, you can utilize cloak to like a near absurd advantage here. You stupid teal cyan reavers, get out of here! I'm tired of you. There we go. Yeah, there. I mean, they're. Their upgrades are nothing to sneeze at either. They went they just go like 3-3-3, boom, boom, boom. Not enough minerals. And that's it for my income. I have no more money. We are vigilant. I do have seven carriers, which are three attack, with ex with shields, with good amounts of shields, plus an arbiter. The thing the arbiter attack that does like that massive splash damage is interesting. I don't think it actually does more DPS per se, but uh, well, what it does do is it locks the Arbiter in place, so you can't actually uh, move it. Like, you can't... So if it's getting focused down and it's attacking something, its attack animation is really long, so you can't actually move it. So, like, if I do this... See, I'm trying to spam click away. I can't. Oh, you jerk. See, stop it! <laughs> Arbiter! Wait, 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 wait. Of course we want that. I almost, I almost didn't, I almost didn't take it. Oh, it's running away. He's a coward. He's a coward. We'll get him when he comes back. Let's throw down some shields on whoever needs it. Go ahead, do it again, you jerk. All right, it's been it's been over 25 minutes. So I again, I it's unclear to me. I'm out of money, so I have to I'm just going to keep sitting in my base and and see if something is going to trigger the map to end. He's not he's not coming to attack me. I can't even afford air armor. If I wanted a level two of it, but I can the base three plating on the carriers. They're so strong. We're near max out, and I could probably go and end the map with these carriers by simply roaming up the the left of the map, killing the outskirts of these bases, and then hitting Alderis. If I wanted to do it that way, but again, I will cycle a save because if there is a pacifist ending, it has not fired yet, and I'm not sure what would. What I kind of want to do is save and then and then try to maybe kill and then kill uh, one of the cyan bases just because I want to see what happens. Oh, it's that jerk. Go and get him. He's the coward. Just follow. Get him. Come back. <laughs> Let's try it. Let's save. And then move in and attack Teal. And then I can just load the save. It is as I feared. Yes, he sucks. Like something triggers when he Your when he does that. Something happens. So I guess let's not do that. Because he's basically saying, like, I knew you'd be hostile to me, even though I've been sending units to kill you this whole time. The question is, again, I don't know how long I should be waiting for before acting. I'm waiting very well. And also having, again, no income is a, a frightening prospect, but I have more than enough Dark Archons to continue maintaining my army with all the strong stuff that White and Brown will continue to send. Could have taken another Arbiter, too, but I didn't. And this Arbiter is following, and in StarCraft 1, they're not, they're not attack moving. I think they just follow. So it's possible that unless he's standing... Well, it's possible when he stops, he will, uh... Affirmative. Uh, I honestly don't know. It's possible that when the Arbiter stops, it'll still attack. But if it's moving, it won't stop to attack. And that's good, because I don't want it to. 
Upgrade complete. I wonder if we just avoid teal but go for go for Alderis. Maybe let's go go and go for a little looksy Lou. I don't want to get too close to teal. It's another arbiter. Let's just send it. Let's send our observer out and see what we can find. Okay, now I have another arbiter. Okay. I lost one of my carriers. That is painful. Here, why don't we, uh, why don't we actually utilize stasis in some capacity? It's been about 30 minutes, but I did reload a save, so I thought like 30 minutes might be the sweet the sweet spot where I should wait before trying again. I mean, he also he said something like "It is as I feared," which makes me wonder. If I blew my chance because I killed that one probe, I really doubt that the single probe matters, but I don't know, it might. But in any case, I survived for, for about 30 minutes. Now I could, I guess, I gotta figure out what triggers this though. I'm a little concerned again that, that killing that probe was what, what did it, because he did at one point make another little voice line where he goes, it was, it is as I feared. These attacks are pretty big. Take this, quick. Hello. There you go. Yeah, see, there's another, there's another blue base here, and this is the only ground path, as far as I know, into the white bases. So it's, the whole idea is again, sit in your base. It's a good amount of scouts. Oh, okay. All right, something's happening. I think it was 30 minutes. Matter, you had no right to interfere. Be gone from this world. You are no longer welcome among us. Fine, I've done what I came here to do. I've ensured the destruction of the renegade cerebrates, and I used you to do it. Have fun, mighty Protoss. We'll be seeing each other again real soon. All right. That's that's interesting. So rather than having the conversation with Alderis at all, because we never fought our way up to him, Kerrigan just shows up and's like, "You're all taking too long," and she kills him. So now we've technically completed mission seven with the pacifist ending, which supposedly gives us an additional ally in the next mission. Now, one thing that Necron has said to me in conversations is how it's challenging to balance this bank cached data because you can't make things too strong, right? You don't want to make it so that um, you know, the player does something and then it, it makes things way too easy on the finale, right? So, like, all the things I did in Mission 3 and getting the additional AI here, I presume will make Mission 8 maybe a little easier. But I'm not expecting, like, a massive extra AI ally that's going to just conquer the map. And I'm not expecting a lot of stuff from that stuff I saved in uh, in Mission 3. Just, like, little little tiny stuff. Like he said, like, saving the Cyber Core in Mission 3, one of the ten things... Uh, gives your ally like four or five extra units. You know, it's nothing fantastical. It's not huge, um, but you know, spread out. It's kind of cool for me to feel like I have. I'm going in with my best foot forward. Is how I look at it. It's sort of like a min-max approach, a completionist approach. And to be fair, I think that the pacifist ending here is supposed to be a, pretty much a complete secret. Um, but it is thematic to the map, where you know you're not actively trying to kill Alderis. It doesn't make sense that you actively are going to try to kill him. You're just going to wait it out until you can talk with him. And uh, I guess I understand that. 
and you do get a little bit of a hint at the beginning where it's like, hey, we don't want to antagonize him. We should just wait, because it seems like if we'll attack him, he's going to attack us with his full strength. So there is a hint, there is a clue in, in mission. And also, I'm showcasing these maps, and I want to showcase some of the more unique concepts in them. So even though it's like semi-spoiled by looking at the mission synopsis, to me, again, I see that as like a, a challenge to to unlock something that most people might not see. And that's what, again, I think a good showcase is, is supposed to do. All right, that's going to be it for me today. We're going to go into the finale next time, and we'll see what craziness awaits us with the temple. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.